Ronaldo Sosa, this is for you. Earlier today, Ronaldo asked me to do a uh, demo or instructional video about my last words, at least the intro to my last words in Good Morning Black Friday. And though I'm going to defer on the Good Morning Black Friday one, not because I can't do it, but because I know somebody who can do it amazingly well and think that he would do uh, very excellently at uh, uh, producing an instructional video about how to do it. Um, Yes, that's right, Kitty. Uh, Stuart's very good at that sort of thing. Anyway, um, I went ahead and I said, yes, of course, I will do uh, uh, gladly the just the intro. I'm surprised he just wants the intro, but I'll be happy to do the intro to this. Now, uh, word of the wise, uh, once again, uh, the tunings may be a little on the weird side. Um, it seems to be a running gag with uh, a lot of tunes from the 1980s, especially with uh, Thrash, is that they're slightly off pitch. Uh, to the high side, my cat Hopper here really wants to help out with this one. But he's a good boy, and I'm sure he will. Anyway, the uh, uh, my tunings are pretty standard for this at this point. But uh, going on with the show, the um, the piece is definitely not for beginners. Now, I've talked about things not being for beginners before, uh, specifically on the last Megadeth tune. This one is even less for beginners, just because it really, really, really makes you concentrate. It makes you move, it makes you think, and it's hard to play. Uh, the Chris Poland thing, uh, the lead that he does in the beginning, is less hard, uh, but the thing that Mustaine is playing is not easy. It is complicated and it really keeps you moving. Your timing has to be good. Your flexibility in your left hand has to be good. And your nimbleness in your left hand has to be good as well. And I've noticed that Dave, as of late, when they do this live, he doesn't exactly play it the way he does on the album. And definitely doesn't play it the way he did back in like 86. So, without any further ado, uh, this is mostly in uh, D minor. And it's, we're doing an inversion of that right there. So, D minor chord. Well, this is also D minor. So this begins with an A note and pulling off to the E, followed by the F and the D note here. And that's the next thing you're going to be playing here, which is <laughs> my cat jumping up in the way. What a good boy. <laughs> so uh, once again, So we're jumping up here to a C note. If I had a C note for every time I played a C note. And this is a pedal tone thing. This whole thing is pretty well just pedaling off of E, F, and D. So we're going from a minor. Uh, what would this be? Uh, minor sus two to minor you know, seven, still sus two. Back and forth. Till you can get it up to speed, right? So once you have that pattern, you're going to play that a couple times. Then you're going to go down one fret, here, fourth fret, so this is more diminished now. So when you're doing this, just kind of trade off between the two. And when you're doing that, know that that's not where it stops. You're going to now change these two fingers to this shape, which is a C and the F again. So that's G, F, C, A, E, F, C. And I know he hits this. The sound is there. So And this is the part that gets really difficult. And when I watched him play it in 86, now keep in mind I didn't go to the concert, I just watched it on YouTube. I wanted to see what his fingerings were. 
Um, I was thinking it would be much more difficult than this. I would think in classical, in you know, like a that that kind of thing. Now it's significantly more simplistic, and we're relying on the speed to kind of get us by, because you can't really fret. You know, it it just doesn't work out. I'll show you though. So it's D minor. To, you know, one note further down. Isn't that lovely? From A to uh, G sharp to open G back to D. So the whole thing together, just like this. Right? So that's that. This is marvelous. So, and a lot of it is very Bach-like. Uh, the last two things, both uh, My Last Words and uh, Mary Jane, you know, have that... And the... Reminds me of this... Anyway, that's what it reminds me of. It's uh, one of those marvelous Bach BVWs. But anyway, so Dave does that throughout Chris's solo, the whole and so forth. So towards the end, it starts to get a little kind of more hectic in the changes. Right? Lucky us, that kind of just goes here. Then there's this descending, uh, like this is extremely classical and very nice to play. Uh, Dave's part would be uh, here. So this is uh, F major, the sixth mode, sixth note here. Is D minor. So we're going down from the F note. And we're kind of skipping down every other note for a bit. So it's F, D, E, C, and back to D, to uh, A sharp, to C again, to A, A sharp, or B flat, whatever you want, you know. Uh, D, A again. And then once you get here, this is where things start to change. So here is F again. So we go down a full octave. So from there, it's... And that's, you know, if you want shapes, it's, you know, half step, whole step. And you go down to your uh, C note there. And then back up to D. So... And then, of course, that's kind of electrified at that point. But um, anyway, so all in all, slowly. <laughs> then faster, you know. It's essentially Dave's parts. So for Chris's part, uh, Chris plays extremely interesting stuff here because it's very classically influenced. And um, I mean, you can tell it kind of has to be just to make sure that the mood is right. So when you uh, when you when you take a look at what he's playing, 
it's uh, it's mostly D minor, uh, but there's a little D diminished in there as well. So the. That's just diminished. And he nails a tritone in there. So when he starts out, it's simply. So, but you actually, you know, just kind of whack it. Wait a little bit, and then shake it a little bit. Listen to your vibrato when you're doing it. I can't stress that enough that um, the, the biggest problem today, and yes, this is a minor ring. The difference between a really good guitarist and a beginner guitarist is how good their vibrato is. Pay attention to your vibrato, man, uh, or whoever you're, you know, is listening to this out there. The vibrato is like the most important thing. It's it's the lifeblood of a guitarist. Uh, without a good vibrato, hey man, I don't know what you're trying to pull, but you may be playing a lot of notes, but you know you got to stop sometime. And when you stop, if it sucks, it sucks. So that's the main difference between a good guitarist and a guitarist that is like, you know, a beginner. So work on your vibrato. I used to work on mine for like two hours at a time. No joke. So uh, that's advice I got from B.B. King, a very metal guitar player right there. Anyway, well, I didn't personally get it from him, but he offered that advice in an interview I read. But And it, hey, man, it works. What can I say? I, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with my vibrato. I, I, I'm always working on it. I could always get better. But uh, listen to yourself when you play is the other one. Uh, does it sound like what you mean it to sound like? Listen to you, not what you're playing over, but does it sound like what you mean it to sound like? And if the answer is no, well, man, you got to fix something. Simple as that. So, back to Chris's part. D. Fifth fret, A string. And he goes down to the tritone, A sharp, fourth fret, E string. And he does something very interesting. He kind of, uh, he plays a... Um, What's called a double stop. Essentially, it's a dyad. It's it's uh, two notes played together. So that would be, you know, D and G played together. And there's a little bit of a right before it. So all together. And you slide that down to be cool. Then you're going to play an F power chord. You can play it here if you want, but I don't hear him sliding very far, and this string sounds accurate, and this string sounds accurate, so I'm believing he's playing it here, down to a B-flat power chord, or A-sharp, whatever you want. Then he plays this neat little kind of uh, classically inspired uh, lick, open A, so just open A. Let me just play it. So that, open A, G, F, E. Then you're just kind of, you can switch fingering, or you can do it that way. But you're playing up half step, whole step, whole step. So E, F, G, and back to A. And yes, these two are the same. So why don't I just do this? Because it doesn't sound right to me. This sounds right. Actually, this sounds more right to me. So, the way I would advise you learning it is slip back a little bit. So this is kind of muted. That's not muted. You're only muting this. And not muting that. So this, C, D, and then there's a quick hammer on pull off between E and F on the D string, the second and third fret. Back to it again. Or if you prefer. One more time. Then he does something different. He starts to play where he's going to be harmonizing with himself in a minute. So that's C, B. And we are now out of the key of D minor, but we're still playing. So... But it works, it's nice and creepy. 
Then you're going to F, D, this is on the G string, uh, 10, 7, 9, 10 on the D string, the, the D note again on the 7. But you see, it's not exactly the same the second time. The second time and the third time, he uh, plays a dyad or a double stop and he harmonizes with this lovely uh, major third on both you know, the uh, the C and the B. So a major third of that would be a G sharp or an A flat. This is an octave of this guy. He's literally doing that along with the... It's the same thing, but here. So... Then, uh, Chris harmonizes with Dave's part by playing that up here. So. And then they all go. Of course, they don't play that last part, but still, I'm just goofing off. But uh, but this, not exactly, but it's the same um, pattern, but played with the notes that are three notes higher in the scale. So we're harmonizing in thirds. So where's the third note higher than this? And you could do that. Yeah. Sorry. If you wanted to, but it's much more comfortable to play it here. So we're starting here with an A to an F. So 10, 6, back to 8, which is a G, E which is on the G string now, on the ninth fret. Back to the F, D, E. And you can probably see the, this is kind of, it's just running down the notes of the scale. And when we get back to uh, B flat, it's as simple as that. Or, you really wanted to keep those fingerings, you can, and uh, I'm not going to have a bother with it. And then, of course, there's the riff that is almost impossible to figure out. So that's just a just D, but it's just a fourth of it. So it's the fifth and the, uh, the D there. You know, pulling off to a C, pulling off to a G, then you do the C to G again, and kind of picking on the uh, G down here. Excuse me. It just reminds me of uh, Overkill a bit. I mean, this came out uh, but much before the Hello from the Gutter, but they... All those dreams and broken glass swept down the sewer with the rest of the trash. Anyway, essentially though, that's it. So we'll do the Chris Poland's part really quickly. And play it poorly. For 
for brevity. And that's how you play it. Uh, really, my friend, uh, and whoever else is watching this, I do wish you the best of luck. Like I said, it's very, very not easy to play, especially Dave's part. Uh, it is quite challenging, and uh, it'll only improve your playing if you get this stuff down. So take care, take it easy, and uh, hello from Washington State.